Hi everyone, I'm coach Lorena Arias and it's time to start a new sport, volleyball. I'm a bit disappointed not to have this unit on the court because it's my favorite sport in PE. At the end of the unit, you will be able to one, know and execute the basic skills of volleyball, two, understand how the game works, and three, identify certain rules of the sport. First, let's start with the basic concepts. What is volleyball? Volleyball is a team sport that is played on a court divided by a net. The net is quite high. For women, it is 2 meters and 24 centimeters. For men, it is 2 meters and 43 centimeters. Each team has a maximum of 6 players. The goal of the game is to get to 25 points on each set. A team has to win 3 out of 5 sets in official competitions. The deciding set is played to 15 points. An important detail is that you have to win by 2 points. So if both teams reach to 24 points on the first sets, not the fifth one, they no longer have to get to 25 points, but to 26, and so on until a team wins by two. But how do you get a point? A team gets a point in several ways, but the most basic way to understand it is that when the other team does not return the ball, which means that any time the ball bounces inside the opponent's side of the court, your team gets a point. You can achieve this by serving, by spiking, or by blocking, or just when the other team lets the ball bounce, maybe because of a lack of communication. You can also get a point if the other team touches the net, hits the ball out of bounds, or touches the ball more than three times. Also, when a player touches the ball twice in a row, known as double touch, if the player touches the line when serving, or when the players in the back row invade the front row to spike. Tricky, huh? And the most interesting rule, in my opinion, if a player performs a skill incorrectly by holding the ball too long or by carrying the ball, which means that there was not a clean hit, a point also goes to the other team. Now, an important thing to know is that you cannot stay on your same position at all times. Sometimes you get to be at the back row and sometimes you will be at the front row. People at the back row cannot spike passing the 3 meter line. If you're at the front row, you can spike from everywhere. Each player has a position that they perform during the game. They are numbered. As we mentioned before, there are 6 players on the court. If you're facing the net, the positions of the players are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. As you can see, positions of players are placed counterclockwise, and the movement of the players when they have to rotate is clockwise. A team rotates every time they win the point as a receiving team. Let's look at an example. The team that just served is University of Minnesota, and the team that is about to hit the ball on the white shirts is University of Stanford. As you can see, there is a pass, a set, and a spike. The defensive player tried to get it back, and then you try to create a play again. Pass, set, and spike. This is a long rally. Let's see what happens. The point goes to the team on the right, Stanford. Remember, they were the receiving team. And as you can see in the scoreboard, they're winning 1-0 now. Now, since they were the team who was receiving, they get to rotate. They get to start the next point. Let's see what happens now. Pass, set, spike. Pass, set, and spike. Again, the point goes to Stanford. If you remember who was serving last, oh no, it was University of Stanford. But as you're going to see, in just a few seconds, the same player serves, which means that the team did not rotate because as a serving team, they won the point. Here again, this time the point goes to University of Minnesota. Remember, they were receiving, they get to rotate, and now they get to serve. Everyone switches positions, but the team that lost the point stays the same. Let's go over the positions. We're going to concentrate on position 4, which is also known as the outside hitter, 3, which is the middle block or center, and 2, who is the setter, most of the time. It is called 2 because normally he or she receives the pass and he or she are the number 2 player to touch the ball. Then the number 2 player decides if he or she wants to set to the middle, to the outside hitter, to the right side, or to the back row. 
The setters are really quick, and they are responsible to create the best possible attack. They have to know his or her players really well, and they have to stay as unpredictable as possible. The outside hitter, or position 4, is one of the attackers of the team. He or she receives the set from the setter and tries to put away the ball to get a point for his or her team. Let's see some outside hitters in action. Then we have the defense specialist, also called the libero. This is a recent position. He or she is a player that remains in the back row and has the talent to defend really well. He or she wears a different jersey because the libero cannot spike or serve. Only in the U.S. Collegial League, a libero can serve. The ball and referees have to be able to distinguish the libero among other players. The players rotate every time they win a point as a receiving team. Remember this rule. Not because a player has a certain position means that they cannot do anything else. It's just a position that they performed really well. Now we're going to talk about something called the block. As we know, the goal of the hitter is to do a spike that does not return to his or her team's side. A kill hit by a spiker gives his or her team a point, but the other team gets to defend their side with something called a block. A block is when two or three players jump near to the net to stop the spike of the other team, or at least touch it to take some of the speed of the ball and make it possible for the team to control that attack and have a chance. And sometimes the block is really successful, it does not let the ball pass at all. Volleyball is a very unique sport. Here's a key element that I want you to pay attention to. Your goal as a player is to slow down the ball. Decelerate, caution, remove the speed. Everything in sports is about control. Taking the speed of the ball is what helps you control the ball better. The ball, because the serve comes really fast, the best way to decelerate the ball is by using a forearm pass or a dig. In my opinion, volleyball is a unique sport because it is a sport where you cannot have any control of the ball at any time. You have to bounce the ball of your arms or fingers to pass it in a nice way to your classmate. You can never hold it. You have to think while you perform the skill. Although in badminton, the birdie cannot bounce because a player will lose the point, in volleyball, the difference is that your first goal is not to pass the ball to the other side. Your goal is to create a play with your team to attack the other team and make sure that volleyball does not come back. <laughs> 